One of my colleagues said to me yesterday, uh, is what the government did this week a, a boost to the Northern powerhouse or does it really feel like the great train robbery to you? Well, I, have to, I laugh to myself as a Manchester United fan when you introduce the topic. I, I'm not sure who's handling uh, priority matters worse, the Glazer family with United or <laughs> Boris and his team with this. I mean... <clears throat> You know, they're both, they're both absolutely shambolic, to be honest with you. The, as, as my uh, ex-chancellor, uh, when I was a, briefly a minister, said, I think, to the FT yesterday, that who, who would have who thought announcing a package close to £100 billion could go down so badly? And I think, I think there's two problems. The first one is uh, this government ha seems to be... Uh, completely inept to expectations management. Um, you know, this is a government that's taught, I think, factually, somewhere between 60 and 70 times about delivering Northern Powerhouse Rail in full, which, which is right at the core of the whole idea of the Northern Powerhouse concept, which obviously I'm in the middle of. Um, and uh, they, they've sort of penny-pinched. Um, but, uh, you know, if this would have been the first time that ever made a policy announcement about Northern Powerhouse Rail, it might not have gone down quite as badly as it has. But what they've managed to do is is disappoint virtually everybody, including Manchester, by the way, because as, as, as much as they still got HS2 and all the bits of Northern Powerhouse Rail, they haven't got what they wanted at the station either. Uh, and of course, the key part of the agglomeration is it, it's not really linking us up to leads properly, which was supposed to be the priority first part uh, of Northern Powerhouse Rail and indeed the integrated rail plan. So, it, it, you know, in isolation, if it would have just appeared from nowhere, it might not have been so bad. But given everything that's followed since uh, Boris Johnson became prime minister, as, as we can see with the reaction across the board, it's pretty disappointing. So, so, both, so the problem is both substance and handling. And by the way, we'll come to the football question a bit later. But um, <laughs> uh, let, 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 let's uh, let, listen to what uh, Grant Shapps, the Transport yeah. Secretary, said, or let, let me remind you of what he sure. said, that um, the government uh, plan would halve uh, journey times in some parts of the north uh, from Manchester to Leeds and so on by upgrading. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Surely that's a win of some description. Well, you know, I've spent a lot of time on it and, I, you know, I, I keep trying to uh, chat with real uh, rail engineering experts because, indeed, if the government's plan delivers six trains an hour from Leeds to Manchester in 33 minutes, uh, that is pretty good. But the, the, the problem is, uh, with what they have specifically said they're going to do, I, I'm yet to find a single technical expert that believes it's deliverable because oh. they've got a new new line from Leeds to Huddersfield, but from Huddersfield uh, on to Leeds, it's essentially a, a, a planned upgrade of the existing one. And as anybody that travels uh, across the Pennines on that line, never mind the M62 knows, you know, the, 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 the line doesn't seem to be capable enough of dealing with what it has now, never mind more in the future. So... It's just if if one could take for 100% certainty the great powers of digitalization, uh, which which is implicitly instrumental to this new plan, then it would be fantastic. But that that's sort of assuming that the life and delivery of any kind of infrastructure in the UK always works so smoothly, and we know it. We know we know it doesn't. The, the, um, the people who I suppose feel most aggrieved are. Uh, people of Bradford, who, yes. yeah. as you, I think, have pointed out, um, have the youngest workforce uh, in the UK. Unfortunately, yeah. that workforce now can't really travel to yeah. the places where there are the, the jobs. Is that, if you like, the central problem that with what the government's done that you have, that it's not really joining up the metropolitan areas of uh, the north? I mean, you know, when I... In the early days of trying to get uh, the Northern Powerhouse idea adopted, I used to sort of inelegantly call it Manchef Leedspool uh, because 
if you take Manchester to any of those other three cities, the distance is less than the central line tube line in London. So the whole idea is to try and get all the people that live within that area, uh, whether they be producers or consumers, it's about 8 million people, to be able to move around as easily as people do on the London uh, transport system and, and to have it all integrated. And obviously, for people in Bradford, they, they, they've, got a, they've got a sort of token gesture of electrification from Bradford to Leeds, but that means they've got to go the opposite way in order to go to Manchester afterwards. And obviously, that, it, that's like going from, say, I don't know, um, Richmond out to, out to Reading before you come back into London. So obviously, it, for people from Bradford, it's particularly unhelpful. But I, I would add again, Trevor, that you know, those of us that have been following it with great closeness for the past couple of years, they could have handled that better because it seemed quite obvious to me that the Bradford link wouldn't happen. But yet uh, really? they've allowed a lot of people to think that it would. Uh, because it's, it is quite the, the Bradford bit to do uh, and have the train going through Bradford would be quite expensive. But uh, I've, I've seen since, and here's another thing to throw in, given the, the politics of all of this, and interestingly, how the Labour opposition is now seemingly saying even more powerfully than I recall them saying in the past that they will deliver it in full, including Bradford, the political pressures might come back uh, and, and get them to rethink again. I mean, the, the one thing is for sure with all this never ending nonsense surrounding northern transport is that there's always some other idea in the next couple of years. So I, I, yeah. I hope in this case, this is not the end of Northern Powerhouse Rail because whilst yeah. there are. Bigger issues than transport, Northern Powerhouse Rail is central to the whole idea that I help create. Well, you're, you're talking about the, the politics of it, and you're right. Most people, uh, wherever they are, aren't going to be paying too much attention to the detail of it. But I suppose that the politics of this week could look like that actually this is a government which essentially uh, thinks first about the South and the North gets the leavings. In a sense, London has crossrail, and nothing has been allowed to get in the way of delivering that. Uh, delays, higher, higher costs, mm -hmm. all sorts of issues and planning and so on. Uh, so, but crossrail is going to happen, come what may, but suddenly the North, boof. You're not getting the thing that, as you say, everybody thought you were going to get. Well, let's see whether they, they, they revise that, because, of course, the, the downside of very strong expectations creation is that it does create belief and, 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 a, and, a, and a, what's the, a spirit and a desire and a passion. And so, and that's partly what created the victory for them in the election. But if they want to stay in power, uh, they've obviously got to show some evidence of following through. Um, I, I would add, in addition, uh, I, I smell that... There, there has been quite a bit of the hand of the Treasury playing around to try and save a few billion here and there in the background. But again, for a strategic government that, that judges risk-reward of these things properly, you know, from what I can see, they're basically trying to save about four billion by not going all the way through to Leeds from the original announced plan for Northern Powerhouse Rail. And it doesn't, given the amount of money we're talking about here, that's about 10% of what was the original total. And that, that seems to me to be a bad risk reward judgment from people in the Treasury as well, to be honest. OK, I can't let you go without asking you what might be called the Manchester City yeah. question arising out of all of this, <laughs> which is that um, I, but for, for fans of Manchester United, um, there is some quite good news here because uh, the high-speed line will continue to run from the south uh, to Birmingham <laughs> and then on to Manchester. So that yeah. huge percentage of Manchester United fans who don't come from Manchester at all gonna are say. still going to be able to get to Old Trafford, aren't they? Uh, they, they? They might find out if things carry on the way that, that they're going that they don't want to go there too much anymore. If, Manchester United <laughs> needs, uh, needs owners that have uh, profit with purpose rather than uh, no purpose whatsoever. Completely shambolic how they're presiding over this fiasco. Complete, completely shambolic.